Now you would think that the vast number of videos that I've done linking sugar to diabetes is the only cause of diabetes, but it's not. There are other things that cause diabetes and that's what this video is about. All right, let's go through the list. Number one, you have Vacor, which is rat poison. Now this one has been banned in the US, but not in other countries. Apparently, if you're exposed to this, it's going to destroy the beta cells of the pancreas, increasing your risk to diabetes type one. All right, number two, air pollution. That's right. Apparently, if you live in an area that's very polluted, those particulates go into the body, create inflammation, and that can increase your risk for getting diabetes. Even people that have been exposed to the pollution from wildfires have an increased risk of getting diabetes. Pretty wild. Then we get the arsenic, which uh, sometimes can be in the water supply, and that apparently affects the immune system, triggering an autoimmune condition, specifically diabetes type 1, where your own cells turn on itself and you have an autoimmune disease. Now, part of this mechanism has to do with dysbiosis, which is an alteration in your microbes, your microbiome, which can then also shut down your insulin, in addition to destroying the beta cells of the pancreas, which lead to diabetes type one. Then we get this other chemical, which is actually quite common, bisphenol A, it's called BPA. Now this is one of the chemicals in plastics and also that resin that lines the inside of certain cans. Even when you're consuming canned water, you may be exposed to this resin and this resin promotes autoimmune problems as in a trigger to type one diabetes. And then we get to glyphosate, the herbicide, also known as Roundup Ready. This is in the GMO crops, like the soy, the corn, the canola. And this also has been linked to diabetes. So in summary, it's not only sugar that can cause diabetes. This is cool information. Intermittent fasting could replace insulin for diabetics type 2. Now, the difference between a type 1 and a type 2 diabetic is in a type 1 diabetic, they're lacking insulin, okay? So the cells in the pancreas, called the beta cells, are not able to produce any more insulin. So there's nothing to keep their blood sugars down. So they have massively high blood sugars. So they're going to need insulin, okay? In type 2, we have a different situation. We have insulin resistance, which initially makes the body produce excessive amounts of insulin. Okay? but it's not being effective. It's not working because it's being filtered by the receptors that are not able to pull it into the body. So we have a situation where we have a lot of insulin in the body, but it's actually not working. Okay, And that's why the blood sugars go high. So there's two different mechanisms. Now, in time, when a type 2 diabetic uh, with insulin resistance progresses, the beta cells in the pancreas start becoming exhausted and we have a situation where that high insulin, hyperinsulinemia, becomes less and less and less and less until the point where they are now deficient in insulin as well. And so some of the type 2 diabetics will then be given insulin in addition to their other medications. Now, what is the problem with this? The complications, the side effects from high sugar are very similar to the complications and side effects of high insulin. So ideally, if you're a type 1 diabetic or a type 2 diabetic where you're on insulin, the ideal situation is to take the least amount possible because of all the problems that come with high levels of insulin, like macro and microvascular problems. In other words, there's problems in the arteries with circulation, as well as in the tiny blood vessels to the nervous system. So you start getting uh, neuropathies like uh, diabetic neuropathy. You start losing sensation because the nerves are dying because they're not getting the vascular supply. So high sugar destroys uh, circulation or blood vessels to nerves. And this happens in the eye, happens in the kidney, happens in the arteries, it happens in the brain. And so there's a lot of complications with insulin resistance, high insulin, and even low insulin because now we, you need to give the person more insulin to control the blood sugars. And then also this other hormone that opposes insulin that's being produced by the pancreas and it's called glucagon. So anytime we have um, increase of insulin, we're going to have low glucagon. Anytime insulin goes down, now glucagon goes up, okay? And there are a lot of side effects from higher levels of glucagon. So this video is about uh, a very interesting uh, case study with three patients. Now, it's not a lot of patients, but it's a reflection of what I'm seeing 
out there in the community of people who are insulin dependent type 2 diabetics. Because I've heard time and time and time again, if these patients start doing intermittent fasting and they start going on low carb, they do very well. So this is what they found in this case study. This case study demonstrated the effectiveness of therapeutic fasting, intermittent fasting, this is fasting done on a regular basis, to reverse insulin resistance, resulting in stopping insulin to control blood sugars. They were also able to lose significant weight in their midsection and also lower their A1C levels. Now, the most noteworthy outcome was the complete discontinuance of insulin in all three patients. Now, two of the patients were able to completely eliminate all their medications in addition to insulin, and one of the patients was able to eliminate three of the four medications. Now, this is very important information. If you're a diabetic on insulin, either a type 2 or type 1, the ideal situation it would be to take the least amount of insulin. And you know, the more carbs you eat, the more insulin units you need to take. So it would make common sense to lower the amount of carbohydrates, and you can do that with intermittent fasting or going on keto. And both of these actions are going to greatly reduce the need for insulin, so you can take less. Now, when the need for insulin goes down, that's going to alter your blood sugar. So definitely work with your doctor if you're doing this. Don't do this by yourself. But I see this data in the future becoming the norm because it's so effective, using intermittent fasting to help control your blood sugars and the need for taking insulin. Now, if you're new to my channel and you want more information on exactly what to eat and how to do intermittent fasting, I put the link down below. Check it out. Before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof Your Immune System. It's a free course. I want you to take it. And here's why. Here's you. Here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today. Hey, before because of the censoring and the suppressing of the algorithms on YouTube, it's becoming more difficult to find my content. And there's a lot of content that I cannot put on YouTube, unfortunately. So to make sure you have full access of all my information, go to drberg.com and subscribe to my newsletter by clicking the link down below in the description. I will see you on the other side.